Hello, my name is Wendy Redshaw and I'm going to read a story from the Girls' Crystal 1950s Annual. And so it's quite an old-fashioned story and it's called The Ballet Shoes by Carolyn Bailey. I'll start now. Sybil Boardman pushed her way through the excited crowd of people waiting for the curtain to rise on Miss Warner's students' ballet evening. Stupid creatures! What could the evening mean to them, she thought bitterly, even if the great Madame Ramona, whose world-famous ballet was being presented in the nearby local opera house, was present? What couldn't it mean to her, though if only she could have a chance to show her skill? She scowled as she thought of her position, understudy instead of star, while Gay Hamilton danced the exacting role of the spirit of the dawn, she would be hiding in the wings. Her own chances of becoming a star had been ruined because Gay was slight and frail and thought to have an ethereal type of beauty. Although there's nothing to choose between your dancing, Miss Warner had said, Gay's smaller figure is more suited to the role. As Sybil entered Gay's dressing room, she saw that her rival was standing in front of the fire, changing her costume. Concealing her jealousy, she made a pretense of conversation, but suddenly the makeup artist called from the other dressing room. Hurry up, please, Miss Hamilton. You're next. Come in, called Gay, and hurried into the adjoining room. Sybil's eyes gleamed. Here, as if arranged by her, by fate itself, was her opportunity. Gay had not changed into her ballet shoes. There they were on the stool with her clothes looking like two little pink flowers. So small and dainty were they. If she could hide them, Gay would lose her chance and she would take her place in the ballet for Gay had not bought a spare pair of shoes and the other girls were too large for her. But where could she hide the shoes? Sybil glanced round and as she saw the crackling fire, she had an even better idea. Burn the shoes and leave no evidence. That was it. Snatching them up, she flung them amongst the blazing coals, up shot the flames, hungrily consuming the satin ribbons at one gulp. A few splutters and the charred remains mingled with the burning cinders. Before anyone could come into the dressing room, Sybil ran off to join Gay and soon she was seated in the chair being attended to by the makeup artist while Gay hurried back to get her shoes. Before long the music struck up and Sybil heard the orchestra playing the prelude to the ballet. It was difficult to conceal her impatience as she waited for what she knew would happen. As she expected, Miss Warner at last burst into the room. Oh, there you are, Sybil. Come at once. You must dance Gay's part. There's something wrong. Gay can't find her ballet shoes. But she was wearing them, surely. No, no, she's lost them somewhere, and I daren't wait any longer. Do hurry. Here is your entrance coming. She almost pushed the girl onto the stage, and Sybil hid a smile of triumph. This was her moment, the turning point of her life. As the spirit of dawn, Sybil excelled herself. She danced the role with a brilliance and polish that she had never before been able to achieve, and the audience sat entranced. At the end of the long and difficult dance, she stood poised on tiptoe, her arms outstretched above the clouds, while the audience thundered their applause. Four times she was recalled to take the curtain. It was an even greater triumph than she had expected, and after such an ovation, she felt sure that Madame Ramona would offer her a coveted place in her famous ballet. She looked round for Gay, hoping that the girl would witness her triumph, but Gay was nowhere about. Making her way to the dressing room, Sybil leapt up the praise and flattery that was showered upon her from all sides and then impatiently she waited for Miss Warner and Madame Ramona. Suddenly Miss Warner came hurrying along but to Sybil's surprise she was alone. Sybil you dance brilliantly she said with obvious pleasure. I have never seen such a performance. I think it was wonderful of you to step in like that at the very last moment and save the situation. I do wish Madame Ramona could have seen you. Sybil stared in consternation. But, but wasn't she there? She gasped. No, unfortunately. 
She called just as you had begun your dance, but couldn't stay. It's a long story, and I'll explain it later. But I have a lovely surprise for you. Madame Ramona gave me two complimentary tickets for the Sleeping Princess next week. You can come along with me and meet her there. I'll see you in the theatre, she added, giving Sybil one of the tickets. The girls crowded round as Miss Warner left the room. <gasps> Front row of the stalls. You lucky beggar, Daphne explained. The Sleeping Princess is lovely. I've seen it in London. Sybil said nothing. She only tried to hide her disappointment. Of course it was exciting to be given the chance to see the famous ballet and meet Madame Ramona, but she had set her heart on the ballerina seeing her performance. Still no sign of gay. Her clothes had gone and Sybil wondered if she had gone home in disappointment, but thinking it wiser not to comment, she asked no questions. The following Saturday, Sybil felt excited and important as she arrived at the Opera House and took a seat. Miss Warner wasn't there, but she hurried to claim her seat just as the curtain was rising, so Sybil only had chance to smile and whisper, hello, before the performance commenced. The beauty of the decor held her imagination and she sat as one in a dream while the beautiful ballet unfolded. Some day, she thought, I shall be here. Then she caught sight of a figure who seemed vaguely familiar. Surely it couldn't be. She was dreaming. She looked again and gasped, for that slender, dainty figure really was gay. But what was she doing in the ballet? For the rest of the act, Sybil wrestled vainly with the mystery. As the curtain came down, an attendant came forward with a card for Miss Warner. Come along, she said, we are to go behind. Sybil followed her behind the stage to the dressing rooms where Madame Ramona was fluttering about like an excited hen with chicks. Ah, oh, my dear Miss Warner, she said, catching sight of her and hurrying forward to seize her hands. What a charming girl you lent me. We must keep her, of course. She has elegance and those dainty feet, such balance, such poise. She will do well here. I myself say so. Sybil felt quite in the background. There was not even an opportunity to be introduced. Suddenly Gay appeared and noticing Sybil, hurried forward in eager excitement. I'm so glad to see you, she said. I've been so busy dancing. I haven't had a chance to see you since last week. What happened? asked Sybil. It was last Saturday. I was looking for my ballet shoes and you had just gone on the stage in my place when Madame Ramona came. She was in a terrible state. One of the girls had broken her ankle and there was no one to take her place. Would Miss Warner lend her somebody? Well, there was only you and myself who could do it. And as you were on the stage, it had to be me. But, but you had new shoes, gasped Sybil. Gay smiled. I know, but Madame Ramona said that it didn't matter. They had shoes and everything at the theatre. So off I was bundled straight away. And it seems Madame Ramona had a taxi waiting. And now, isn't it wonderful? She wants to keep me and I shall be a permanent member of her famous ballet. Sybil stared at the happy girl in front of her, a heart full of bitterness. She realised that but for her spiteful act, it would have been herself and not Gay who would have secured this marvellous opportunity. Yes, it is wonderful, she said slowly, and all because you lost your ballet shoes. Now this story shows that to be spiteful can often end up much worse than if you'd, than if you'd helped. Thank you.